df dt equals af. Um, let's say that's a population equation where f is our population of fish, uh, t is time, and a is some kind of growth factor in the equation. Unless we've been told this equation is non-dimensional, in which case um, this variable would be a lowercase letter, uh, this constant would be an alpha, and this time variable might still be a t or it might be a tau. Unless we've been told this, this equation is non-dimensional, we assume that every one of these quantities that we're seeing in the, this equation, the dependent variable, the independent variable, and all of the constants, uh, we assume that they each have a dimension. We write bracket f bracket to denote the dimension of f, and so this equals number of fish, just as the dimension of s is, let's say that these are sharks, number of sharks, and the dimension of t is time. In physical uh, problems, there's usually just a few different dimensions that show up, and they have um, standard symbols that we use to denote, denote them. So mass sometimes shows up, and we denote it m. Um, lengths or distances, lengths or distances sometimes show up, and we denote them l. Uh, time is a pretty common dimension, and we can denote it t. Um, and then temperature is another common dimension in physics, and uh, we denote it um, capital theta. When we're talking about populations, such as a population of fish or a population of sharks, we don't have a standard symbol that we use um, to indicate that type of dimension. Instead, uh, we would write it out in words. In terms of reasoning about dimension, uh, the most important thing to know is that, it, that if two terms are set equal to each other, for example, the two sides of this equation, or um, this side of this equation and the rs, um, or r, negative rs squared over k, for two things to be equal to each other, they need to have the same dimension. I can write this as the dimension of df dt is equal to the dimension of af. As we work with uh, differential equations, a question you should always be asking yourself is, what are the dimensions of each of the variables and each of the parameters that I'm working with here? Uh, in this upper one, because I've told you that this is about fish population, um, and because t is quite standard and always represents time, um, we know the dimensions of f and the dimensions of t. Um, however, we have to surmise the dimensions of a from the problem. What are the dimensions of a? They need to be equal to the dimensions of df dt divided by um, the dimensions of f. What's the dimension of the derivative? Um, it's the dimension of each of the things going into the fraction. So this is number of fish over time, all divided by number of fish. And so the dimensions of a um, are 1 over time, which we also write as 1 over capital T, since capital T denotes that time dimension. Looking to the second equation, we might also want to know the dimensions of R and the dimensions of K. Uh, to think about the dimensions of R, we can see that this equation expands uh, to be ds dt equals Rs plus another term, and so R R, R has the same role in this equation as A did in that one. The dimensions will be 1 over time. Looking on to K, we can see that we take 1 minus S over K. So 1 and S over K need to have the same dimensions. Now, 1 is a number here, and we consider it to be unitless. That means that S and K actually need to have the same dimensions. So the dimensions of S were the number of sharks, the dimensions of k are also going to be the number of sharks. And in this way, given a little bit of information about what the equation is describing, we can reason through to figure out the dimension of each of the constants and variables appearing in the equation.